Okay, so we are back and we are kind of, again, we're going to kind of go into more detail on leakages and injections. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about why do we need to talk about this? Well, because the other model, the, the initial one, the, the closed model that we looked at, was too narrow of a view. In reality, there is money that sort of leaks out of an economy and other money that sort of is injected into it. So we need to understand why money leaks out and why it, and how it is injected back in. Um, so let's go over the three ways that money kind of flows out and flows into an economy outside of our household and firm's circular flow. The first way that this happens is through what's called financial markets. When you take your money to a bank and you save it in a bank, it's basically not spent. Um, that is money that, um, you know, would normally be spent, but instead it's saved. So it's almost like it's leaked out of the economy. Um, however, one thing to know is that when you save money in a bank, and you probably know this, but firms don't exactly just let that money sit in the bank. They take a lot of the money that you save in the bank and they lend it out. So for what's called investment purposes. So let's say somebody else wants to buy a house or a business wants to take out a loan. Um, they borrow money from a bank and uh, when, when they do that, um, this is considered investment. And we'll talk more about investment in the future. Um, but please note that you know, the money that you put in the bank, banks lend out and people buy houses, people, firms buy machinery. Um, and so you know, money is leaked out, but it also kind of flows back in. Next, foreign markets. Uh, the leakage for foreign markets is basically imports which is represented by the letter M. When we buy an import, like for example, if we buy, if somebody in Germany buys a Japanese car, that's money that flows out of our economy and into the economy of Japan. On the other hand, if somebody buys a German car, like for example in the United States, that's money that flows out of America or out of the United States into Germany. This is an injection. Um, and just, you know, this is basically the foreign market leakage and injection. Finally, we've got governments. Um, when the governments charge people taxes, this is a leakage, you know, uh, money that people would have normally been able to spend on other goods and services has now been taken out because the government's taken that money away from people. However, the government also spends money on programs for like healthcare, education, welfare, like Hotsphere. They spend this money and it injects money back into the economy. So anyway, these are the basically the three main markets where we have, uh, or entities that, that cause uh, leakages and injection. Financial markets, foreign markets, and governments. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So we've still got our firms and our households. However, things, uh, you know, we're, we're going to go ahead and put in the monetary flows too. Uh, when households spend money, Right? This is consumption, or sometimes called E for expenditure. Right? Money flows from the households to the firms. Money also flows back from the firms to the households in the form of wages, rent, interest, and profit. Anyway, as you can see, we've got our little diagram here. And the three leakages are, well, the first of the three leakages is savings, which is the financial leakage. However, the injection that sort of compensates for the savings is investment. Next is governments, right? The leakage is taxes, or T. The injection is G, or government spending. And finally, the last one, foreign markets. We also know that, obviously, the leakage is M for imports. And the injection is X for exports. So basically, this is what's called the circular flow model. And uh, you need to know it, and we'll be practicing it in class. So please note the circular flow, the four leakages, and the four, or sorry, the four leakages, three leakages and three injections, and um, well, again, we'll be practicing it in class. Just a few other quick little notes. Generally, most economists would say, that the total amount of leakages should equal the total amount of injections. So taxes plus imports plus savings should equal government spending, exports, and investment. However, this doesn't mean 
that all of the individual leakages and injections will equal each other. For example, as you can see, uh, T doesn't necessarily equal G. Sometimes governments, <laughs> which is most of the time, spend more money than they receive in tax. They borrow money uh, and pretend that they will pay it back later. Um, and so this is, you know, this is an example of where the two leakages injections don't equal each other uh, in general, but as a whole, when we add up all the leakages and injections, they should equal each other. Um, at any point in the model, national output can be measured. We can calculate the flow of goods and services, or the value of the flow of goods and services. And by doing that, why if we add up all the value of the output, or if we add the value of some of the wages and the rent, uh, basically the income, uh, that would also equal national income. So basically, we look at these flows to figure out how much money is in an economy, and what's the value of, of the goods and services produced, or what's the, the total value uh, or the total amount of output in that economy. So we can figure out if the economy is, in fact, growing or shrinking. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, we're going to go ahead and stop there, and uh, we'll be practicing this in class. I hope this helps you, and uh, please answer the questions. And uh, take care, and we'll see you soon.